This bond market alarm has predicted every recession since 1969. Here's what it says happens next in the stock market. Just as a quick aside before we get into the depth of this article, not that it goes that deep, I don't believe that anyone other than either people that are 11 years old and younger or 70 years old and older actually read The Motley Fool. I don't think I've ever seen or heard a sincere investor actually cite or reference The Motley Fool in any regard. I think that this organization has just mastered search engine optimization and have somehow been able to show up in every single Google search with any regard to finance. Anyways, aside from me not understanding at all how this company makes money, we can talk more specifically about their most recent article. And unsurprisingly, two pages down into the article, it turns out that they're just citing a yield curve inversion. They didn't even take the time to do any due diligence and find their own specific metric that they've cherry picked to have a perfect track record in predicting recessions. They just used the one that's been cited by 90 million other people in the past five years. But there's something a little more specifically interesting about this is that they use their specific narrative and they base it off of the beginning of the yield curve inversion. When if you want to just pick random data points off of the 10 year minus the three month treasury plot to see the yield curve, right, depicted as this aspect, you could just look and say, okay, well, if you look at this graph, the yield curve goes down and it goes below zero and then it comes back up. And after it comes back up, surely there's a recession usually. And if you look at this graph, the same metric that they're using to say that this is an accurate prediction of the future recessions, there's probably more evidence just based off of this graph alone that you should probably wait until the yield curve uninverts. And then in a few months, there's more likely to be a recession. That seems like a more accurate fit of the data that we have here, more accurate than they're presenting in their own graphs. Now, to their credit, they do end the article by saying the best course of action for the average investor is to remain invested in the stock market, which is correct. So good on them. But that's after they've buried that one kernel of fact in a mountain of garbage. Just sensationalized and clickbait news heaped onto one tiny kernel of truth. That is looking and cherry picking points off of a graph and then combining it with the underlying the real truth is that no one really knows so you have to stay invested. And for most people, of course, that means indexing and just buying index funds. But then at the very end of the article, that one tiny kernel of truth that they laid bare is obscured again by some more garbage where they say, should you invest $1,000 in the S&P index right now? And they say that, no, you should actually pay for our stock list because we had NVIDIA on it in 2005. And if you had put $1,000 in NVIDIA at the time that went on our recommendation, you'd have made $424,000. It's very obvious who this is catering to. It's catering to someone that has no baseline, has very little knowledge of the stock market, and is looking for someone to help them. And out of their lack of knowledge, they end up getting upsold on a course or some stock picking list that in reality, if the Motley Fool had some crazy stock selection methodology, they'd be using it themselves. They wouldn't really be selling it out to the general public. And I'm not accusing Motley Fool of this specifically, but if you were to find someone's stock picking list that you paid for in like a Discord chat or online somewhere, the odds that that is actually just you participating and being the victim of a pump and dump scheme are infinitely higher than you actually found the, the gem of investing, the perfect easiest solution where you have someone else that you paid $30 for, they now feed you stock tips and then you buy them and make infinite money. It's like, what is the most likely scenario? You found the hidden gem of investing that no one else has really found and that makes you outsized crazy returns. That's option one. Or option two is you're getting sold something that is effectively a scam that's not going to increase your returns in the stock market. And the third option is that you are just the general public victim of a pump and dump scheme that someone else has already pumped the stock and they're offloading it into you and then you're going to be left holding the bag when it's down 80% on some random penny stock. In the end, the only way for us to know is to run through time and find out. The Motley Fool could end up being the best Warren Buffett stock picker that ever existed, and they could have been willing to give everyone this information if we had just listened. They advertise that their returns are 605% as compared to the S&P's returns of 144% as of February 6th of 2024. So maybe there's something there. Uh, likely not, though. And this brings us back to the original clickbait of the article about the specific indication that was signaling a coming recession. And of course, that's being the yield curve inverting. Now, this goes back to a secondary point that we have. It's okay. First off, the yield curve did invert in pre-1960 and the stock market didn't crash. They do point this out in the article. So good on them. Uh, but the point is that if you had just been out of the stock market from the yield curve inverting, which began in October of 2022, 
you would have ended up exiting your position holding the general market at the lowest point that the market has been in the past four years. We would have to have a 30% drawdown from current values in order for us to reach the point at which you would have sold if you would follow the advice and exited the market at the first moment the yield curve inverted. Which raises the question, it's like, okay, so sure the yield curve predicts recessions, but does that mean that you can make money in the stock market by being out of the market when the yield curve is inverted? And the answer is obviously not really. There might be a few cases in which it happens, but you're so much better off just being in the S&P because overall, if you were to be in a situation where you exited the market when the yield curve inverted and you stayed out of the market, but no recession happened, at some point in time, you would have to call it quits. You would have to say, okay, I was wrong about the yield curve predicting the recession, and now I have 30, 40, 50% lost gains in the S&P that I would have otherwise experienced had I not followed this garbage recession warning. Because not only does the recession indication not always work, and when it doesn't work, you're missing out on significant returns because you're sitting out of the market for three or four years. Not only that, but it's also the case of when it does work, you're not even guaranteed the profit. So there's really no point in looking at these macroeconomic factors to determine if we're going to be invested in the S&P. If you're going to be an index investor, just dollar cost average, contribute X percent of your monthly income every month to a retirement account, and just call it good. You're going to be fantastic in 20, 30 years. But this goes back to the original issue that I have with the Motley Fool's article here. And it's that they're specifically looking at one narrative that isn't even a good test for predicting general stock market returns. Underlying this assumption is that there even is a magical bullet that you could find that would accurately predict the next 12 months returns in the stock market. And it just, I don't think it exists. And if it does exist, it's clearly well beyond anything any of us here on YouTube understand. And if you're watching YouTube, you're probably not going to be the 195 IQ genius that's going to find the magic bullet to make your returns crazy without looking at like business fundamentals. This is going to involve people like the Renaissance Technology Medallion Fund, right? These are the type of people that we're talking about. And if you're reading a Motley Fool article, you're this is not the, you're not the target audience for this. You're not going to be the one finding the bullet, and that's okay. You don't need to find the technical analysis bullet that's going to make your returns skyrocket when there are so many other options to becoming filthy rich in a decent amount of time. And the reason why we shouldn't be looking for the magic bullet is that it's easy to find a false bullet. It's easy to find a false example that you think accurately predicts the 12 month returns of the S&P over the past 30 years. If you have a hundred monkeys in a room and each of them picks one stock and you're looking to see which monkey outperforms the S&P, it's easy for us to know, obviously, there's no monkey there that's going to outperform the S&P. It isn't possible. Anything that happens will result from random chance. But of that room of 100 monkeys that are coin flipping stocks, maybe there's 5, 10, 15 that outperform the S&P over one year just because they got randomly lucky. And then if you take those 15 to the next year, you know, maybe two or three of them outperform the S&P. And then the next year, maybe just one of them outperforms the S&P. You could look at this and say, oh, that monkey is the absolute best stock picker. Or you could realistically say, like, they just got lucky and just happened to be that one of the vast pool of monkeys that we were picking from managed to get lucky three times in a row. And with the law of large numbers, the larger the pool of monkeys gets that you're selecting from, obviously you're going to have some crazy outperformers. That doesn't mean there's anything intrinsic to them. So when you're looking for the magic bullet to find some technical analysis that'll make you rich, the odds are you're going to find something that just looks like a magic bullet because of random chance. And then as soon as you start trading with it, it's game over. There goes your capital. As soon as you start listening to the monkey coin flipping stocks, GG, it's over. And the reason why the monkey analogy applies more specifically to technical analysis versus value investing is because the more people use technical analysis, the one technique could just stop working. All the margin that exists in that strategy ceases to exist the more it's used. Now, the same is similar to an extent with fundamental analysis. The more people want to buy cheap, fundamentally valued stocks, the higher the floor of those stocks go. But it still means that there's, there's still a fundamental business that you're buying. And you can apply the fundamental analysis to everything outside of the stock market. You can apply it to the corner store down your street. You can apply it to the business that your friend wants to open. It's, it's everywhere. It is capitalism as we know it. And secondly, if we try to compare more specifically value investing to technical analysis, it's like if we picked a group of sufficiently large monkeys, say a million, 10 million, uh, add however many zeros you want, it really doesn't matter because even if you had 7 billion monkeys coin flipping every year 
for 150 years, it just it wouldn't even break even. There's no monkey there in that sample, statistically speaking, that would be able to beat the market after 150 years. Because we have 7 times 10 to the negative 46 is the magnitude of the scale of the odds that those monkeys are fighting against. And yet, people like previously Benjamin Graham and now his prodigy Warren Buffett have been able to beat the market for that long of a time. That tells you that there it's not random chance. It just can't be. So this entire rant has just been some marginal evidence, some circumstantial facts for you to have in your back pocket when you're trying to think about how you want to pursue your career as an investor. And hopefully this did a little bit to push just a few people away from technical analysis and towards the value investing community. And hopefully that results in their returns being a little higher over their lifetime.